So today we're going to look at the public and private subnets, NAT instances, and NAT gateways. When we create a new VPC, uh -huh. uh, all the subnets we create, they are private subnet. So we have to make them public. And in the default VPC, all the subnets are public subnets. So we don't have to create anything. But in the one which we created uh, just now, we need to, they are all private, so we need to make them public. Yes, so that's the AWS functionality. Um, in general, why do we normally create a public subnet and a private subnet? Is it to uh, make the services available for the like um, a wider audience outside your private network? The public subnet. So that's where we normally keep the resources that needs to be accessible over internet. The normal use cases would be the load balances, web services. We place it behind the DMC. So normally the access would be to first come to the public instance, access the required infrastructure, and from there, depending upon the rule sets and other things that you set for, the traffic could be allowed inside and vice versa. In our example, I think um, as we discussed last week, the default VPC would be normally a public subnet, anything that you launch in them. The private VPC that we created last week, we created a subnet, but we made it into a public subnet. Do we know how we made that subnet into a public subnet? Did you recall a particular step that we did specifically? Yeah, just in the so, root table, we added the 0 0.0s. In. Is that one, yeah? So that would allow something to connect to the internet gateway, yes. So that's the end routing. But just for something to be public, we need something else particularly. Can you recall what that is? Is it the elastic P? OK. Um, in a sense, yes. But I think you're very close to the answer. So that's the public IP. So you need two things. So you need a public IP, and you also need a route to the internet. So it could be an internet gateway, in that instances, whatever, so that we look into the future. But these are the two essential items we need. Since you touched the elastic IP, um, I know some people um, can confuse between an elastic IP and a public IP. I think I put a note somewhere um, here. So elastic IP is merely a static IP. It is a public IPv4 address, but that's a static IP assigned to specific devices, particularly where you need the IP address to be consistent. So you can refer to now your APIs, your services, and other client programs that you normally refer to. And also, if we want to replace the device, you don't need to, um, or replace the instance, you don't need to lose the IP. All you have to do is change the instance and move the IP to that. So you don't have to keep changing your IP. So that's what Elastic IP is. So this is something you can assign within AWS for specific devices. For example, NAT gateways. Those requires an Elastic IP. As we discuss, so the two items that are required are the IP, a public IP address, and the access to the internet. So these are the things that is required for something to be able to access the internet as well as to be able to access from the internet, particularly from the public subnet point of view. As we looked at last week, the internet gateways are attached at the VPC level. So they're normally not associated are attached to the subnet level. We have to associate or route via the route table. And they have a one-to-one -one relationship with the VPC. So each VPC can only be associated to one internet gateway and vice versa. Another thing to note is the resources in the public subnet will have both a public IP as well as private IPs allocated to them. So when we created this, um, public instance last session. As you can see, it has both the public IP as well as the, there's the private IP here. 
So this gets assigned to them by default if you're launching them into a public subnet. A particular step you would need to perform to make a subnet to become a public subnet is we need, when you're creating the subnet, for example, in our case, we have this subnet here, right? If you go into actions, Sorry, good thing. Okay, let me show you something. Let's create a private subnet. Because that's going to be part of our session today. And this is going to be part of our VPC. So if you recall the diagram we had the other day. So this is the session that we created the other day. And let's try to create this infrastructure where we're going to have a single VPC as before. So we're going to have this private VPC. Um, let me use this pointer. So this is the part that we created the other day. So the public subnet part. And this is what we would create today for our session. And we go through some of the other items. So the NAT instances and where we place them and um, NAT gateways as well. So let's quickly create a private subnet. Availability zone, again, I'm not too fast. We can be very specific or we can leave it to them. The CIDR block that we would go to use, I think we used 10.0.1.0 for the public subnet. So let's use 10.0.0 slash 24. That's the private subnet. So that was the private subnet we created. So when we create a subnet, there will be an option called auto assign public IPv4. Remember, we set this last time to public for allowing any instances that are launched into the subnet so they get public IP address. So that's something we have to manually enable so a public network sorry a subnet becomes a public subnet if we do not do that by default that becomes a private subnet so i think somebody has mentioned before any subnet that you create that is not within the default vpc will be automatically a private subnet 